Thank you and good morning everybody. Welcome to First Baptist Church here in Ravenswood. It's good to have you with us today here in the sanctuary. And those of you watching at home, we're certainly glad to have you with us today. And our prayer is that you be blessed for joining us. We believe we have a, a great message from the Lord that's going to encourage you. Uh, wherever you are in your faith journey, we believe that you're going to be encouraged today, that you're going to be uplifted and uh, just motivated to praise God even more after the service than you did when you got here today. It's good to be with you today. Looking at our bulletin, a few announcements I want to highlight for you. Uh, on the back, you can see these beautiful flowers. Kevin, get a good look at these. I'd like to take credit for picking these out, uh, but uh, uh, Jen and I sponsored the flowers this week, and she wanted to do it in memory of a couple of her favorite pets that have passed on. Uh, she still uh, remembers those pets very well, Zeke and Paris, and and uh, we, we we honor them with these flowers, but in this night, look at these beautiful flowers, some rose in there. It looks nice. Beautiful flowers, and uh, we, we uh, want to thank the, the florist for uh, giving us such a beautiful arrangement. Uh, for today. Our October memory verse uh, comes from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 and 2. It says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, and a time to plant, and a time to pluck that which has been planted. Um, in our uh, bulletin, a few announcements we want to touch on. Thank you uh, for those of you that came out for our uh, pumpkin carving last night. Thank you, uh, Susan and Talia, for uh, coordinating that for the church. We had about 20 or so that turned out and, and carved pumpkins. We did that inside, and Susan did just a wonderful job of arranging the, the uh, fellowship hall. We had tables you know, spread all the way out, and uh, families got to work together at their own table. And uh, then at the end of the night, we all put our mask on and did a little parade around the fellowship hall with all the lights out and all the pumpkins lit. We're going to have some of those pictures. We have some on our Facebook page now. Uh, some of you may have already seen them before you uh, joined us here on the live broadcast. But if you haven't seen them yet, check it out. Susan will have them in the November Anchor uh, newsletter as well. So you'll be able to see them. But great job. We've got some real artists in our church. And, uh, you know, not everybody's as good as Destiny, all right? Uh, Philip. Philip did a good job uh, with last night with his pumpkin. Matter of fact, I think he had an award winner. Did you have one of the awards? No, you weren't an award winner. Okay, all right. Well, let me just point that out that you weren't How about that but uh, it was good it was really good way better than mine I'll tell you that but uh, anyway so some of the other things going on tonight the uh, life group for 18 to 35 year olds will meet at five o'clock upstairs in the anchor room um, they're also uh, planning their final details for their escape room visit um, you ever been to one of those you, you get locked into the to the building and you got to work your way from room to room to get out in a certain amount of time and uh, it's a big deal and uh, uh, my kids have known how to do that their whole life that's called being grounded you know, that, that's how that works in my house. So some of you are experts at the escape room, I'll tell you that. But anyway, they're going to be doing that, uh, so that, that's a trip they have planned. And, and uh, Joe, thank you uh, for your work with them, doing a great job, and uh, we're looking forward to, to great things from that group. Uh, beginning at November, we're going to be starting our retired minister's uh, offering, uh, the RMMO. You'll see that in the bulletin. This is one of my favorite uh, missions that we support year in and year out. These are retired ministers from the American American Baptist Churches USA, and uh, we've had many here in our community that have been in for this. This program has not only purchased glasses for people uh, or things when they've been retired, some extra expenses that come their way. This is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, they usually always do this around Christmas time, and uh, so it's just, it's a, I think it's a one month, is it one month, uh, Susan, just for the month of November. Um, so uh, be looking for that. You can uh, contribute online. If you're uh, on our website, on the online giving, there's a drop down menu. Our tithes and offerings go into the general fund, but there's a mission list there. You can see all the different missions we support, and one of those is called RMMO, which is for the Retired Missionaries and Ministers Offering. Um, also, a couple other things. We are planning for our next movie night. Um, that's going to be on November 13th. The movie they're going to be showing for that is Christopher Robin. Um, boy, I tell you, one of the great things our church has done is, is really get involved with these movie licenses. It's really helped uh, us uh, get together from time to time and just enjoy some fellowship. It's, it's a little different with the social distancing and stuff, but it, 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 it's just been a wonderful thing that we've been able to do. So we want to encourage you, if you'd like to, to come out on November 13th at 7 o'clock. Uh, Bible study Wednesday night online. We're calling them Bible snapshots. We're taking individual stories from the Bible and teaching them. It's kind of what you've learned in Sunday school, but going a step further. Uh, last week, we talked about Jesus' first miracle. We talked about the pots uh, that were used, that they had water in, how they were used for ceremonial cleansing. 
thing. We talked a little bit about that. So if you missed that, you can go back and catch that on the archive version. This Wednesday, we're going to be talking about the Samaritan at the well. Remember the story of the woman at the well. And Jesus has an encounter with her and she goes back and all of her neighbors end up getting saved as a result of that encounter she had with the Lord. So we're going to talk about that in a message that's called Come and See. So we'll join us for that uh, Wednesday night at 630. I'll switch over to Ann here in just a moment for, for a youth update. But uh, Trunk or Treat, our church is going to be doing a, a church Trunk or Treat for our kids. We wanted to do something special. Normally, we have a little uh, Halloween party for the kids and they all come in their costume and usually we all get to see them and just have a good time. Well, we, we wanted to do something a little different for them. And uh, this was before it was announced that the city was going to have Trunk or Treat. But what we decided to do was have a Trunk or Treat in the gravel parking lot. And uh, it, it'll, it'll be really low key, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Susan's got, uh, Susan and Talia have been working. They are going to have prizes for the, the, the best decorated car, the scariest or funniest or most disaster. You know, I'm sure there'll be a, a reward there, but uh, it's just going to be a very, you know, our parking lot's not that big. So if you're willing to decorate your car and come out and help the, the kids in the church for that, they can bring a friend and uh, it'll, it'll be uh, special. And you're welcome to, to join us for that. If you'd like to, to, that you're planning on coming and participating in that, please let Susan or Talia know as soon as you can this week, um, because they're kind of mapping out the parking lot uh, for that. Again, that will run at two o'clock on Saturday. So it'll be from two to three thirty in the church parking lot. Uh, Miss uh, Ann, I'll give her a chance to bring us up to speed on what's happening with her uh, junior and senior high group. Well, Sunday night, we had a great time. You guys, didn't you think we had an awesome time? We uh, used the dance floor with all the lights, and we had leftover wedding food, and we had a blast at 22, so it was really good. And then Wednesday night at 25, and we went to Tudors. We're going to continue just trying to have a good time and get through the coronavirus. Uh, we're going to continue back by uh, being in the church fellowship hall this evening, and Miss Nancy, Coach Nance, is going to make spaghetti for you guys, and we're going to have a great lesson so just continue on with what we're doing and we're going to help the church with the trunk or treat for the children and then in november we're going to start working on our outside nativity play at christmas wonderful we're looking forward to that because christmas will be a little different this year so we're, we're having those discussions now how we're going to do that and uh, we're looking forward to a, a great time christmas will be here before you know it anybody put their tree up yet do we have any of you people I'd here like uh, like have my lights up. you got your lights up i'd like to <laughs> They're, they're those people then, all right? Those are the people I'm talking about. If you have your Christmas tree up before uh, Halloween, therapy is what you need, right? But uh, anyway, no, I'm kidding. It's, it's a wonderful, beautiful time for all of us. Last but not least, uh, you'll notice the uh, boxes here on the uh, altar. If you're interested in participating in the Operation Christmas Child, uh, this is a little ministry the church has that uh, has been involved for many years with Samaritan's Purse. That's an organization run by uh, Franklin Graham. You take the, uh, the, the box and you fill it full of goodies. You pick whether it's a boy or girl in the age range that you would like to. They're all packaged up. There's a little a, a, fly, a little brochure that goes with it. You complete it. You can even track where your package uh, goes online. You get a tracking number that you'll be able to see where your package was delivered in what country. And what they do is they take these packages and they will teach a lesson about Jesus being the greatest gift. And once they teach that lesson to the kids, then they're all given a gift. For many kids, they've never had Christmas. They've never had a gift like this. So you can imagine the goodies that you put in the box, what it will be like for one special child. And again, it's all done through uh, Franklin Graham and through the Samaritan's Purse. It's going to go where you send it. It's going to do what it's supposed to do. And uh, if you want to do that, please, uh, you can see in the, inf the information you have until November 8th to get those back to the church. So you only have, you know, a, a couple weeks to do it. So uh, please, if you would, if you're here in the sanctuary, you can take one of the boxes and the flyers with you when you leave today. If you're at home and uh, worshiping the there with us today and you want one of the boxes come by uh, tomorrow or one day this week see us in the office and you'll be more than happy to fix you up with as many as you want and uh, just try and get those back to us on November 8th so a lot of activities going on in the church you can see the uh, bulletin the activities that we have planned uh, for you and at this point let's just prepare our hearts and minds for worship as I go over to uh, Miss Abby and Ann. here's a song that you know this one is called when we all get to heaven you have something Dust? Oh, so uh, Kay's turning. Kay, well, happy birthday. Let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to her first. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Very good. Now we'll 
They're going to sing this song. You know it. It's called When We All Get to Heaven. Number 514. seated as we move into a prayer time this morning. Direct your attention to the prayer bulletin insert. By the way, uh, for our church members at home, hopefully you're receiving the bulletin by mail and you should have uh, the prayer insert that we're talking about today. For the rest of you watching, if you'd like to have a copy of the bulletin, you can find it online at fbcravenswood.org. In our uh, prayer request, we do have uh, several families we re remember uh, today. And let me mention the uh, family of, of Susan Hogarth, the uh, niece of Carolyn Mellinger. I know Carolyn's uh, watching today from home and Carolyn, our prayers are with you and in the uh, loss of uh, Susan. Uh, let's pray for the family of Bill Thompson. We pray for uh, his family and uh, the family of Cadence Davis Martin. And of course, her uh, memorial service is scheduled for today. Uh, some of the others to update to uh, remember uh, Tony Mullins. Uh, also remember uh, Tammy Polly. That's uh, Jerry Mullins' niece, I believe it is. And, uh, you know, she's continuing to recover. Uh, good news Jerry Mullins made it home. We've been praying for him. You know, he had the, uh, they was going to go in for the trip bypass surgery end up having a quad and uh, so that was a pretty substantial uh, surgery that he had but he's home and doing much better so god bless you uh, jerry and uh, you and beth thanks for uh, watching this morning and uh, ann taylor a uh, friend of uh, deb lyons recovering from covid so remember uh, uh, her family in your prayers as well um, of course uh, others in the church that you may have other people in your family that you may be uh, in prayer for uh, keep those uh, on your heart and mind as we uh, prepare to go to the lord uh, remember uh, those of you watching, uh, we, we thank you. We want to pray for you this morning, uh, for you spending time with us, uh, watching us uh, from your home or wherever you may be today. Uh, let's pray for our schools, uh, pray for our uh, teachers, pray for our servicemen and women. Um, we don't want to forget to do that. And most importantly, let's pray for those who haven't made a, a decision to follow Christ in their life yet today. Uh, are there any others in the church you want to mention today? Yes? Tell me my daughter, Chris. She's a teacher at Eastwood. Okay. Okay. So Wayne asking a request, a prayer request for his daughter, uh, Chris Hupp, and pray for her and dealing with COVID and she's much better. So uh, God bless her. And uh, it's good to, good to hear that report, Wayne. Good to hear the report that she's doing better. Zach? Is that Cole? Yeah. Okay. So Cole Stats be having a surgery on the 29th of this month or, okay, October 29th. So uh, Susan will put that down and we'll be uh, praying for him uh, this week for that procedure. And there was another? Yes, my brother-in-law again, the father, he's in Charleston Hospital with lung cancer. Okay, Ben Pauly? Ben McCauley. Ben McCauley, okay, in the hospital with lung cancer. Let's remember uh, him in prayer this morning. Uh, Ann's letting me know about Damon Sampson. Remember Damon, uh, Ann's friend. Uh, he's back in the hospital. No, uh, he's just taking treatments every day. He's getting treatments every day for his uh, cancer. So be in prayer for him, Philip. Bill Masters, their house burned down, and they lost everything. And first name was Bill. Uh, Did you say Steve, Steve Lamaster family? Okay, recovering from a house fire. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the privilege 
Lord, to gather with these folks here this morning, Lord, whether they're in the sanctuary or God watching at home. Father, I thank you for each and every one of them, Lord, because they're, they're prayer warriors. And God, that we come together and touch and agree on these requests that have been known. And Lord, you know every need that's on the prayer bulletin uh, insert this morning, Lord, these people that we pray for all the time here at the church. And God, for the special requests that have been mentioned, Lord, we, we, we present them to you. We lay them at your feet. And God, we know that you're not a respecter of persons, that you see them all equally as your children. And God, we pray that where there is a direction sought or, Lord, that there's guidance needed, Lord, that you provide that in a way that just leads them to where they need to be. And, and God, we believe those that have treatment or, or care, uh, maybe those in the hospital, we believe you have the right staff, the right doctor in the right moment for their situation. And God, most of all, we pray that as you answer prayers in the way that we're asking, Lord, that you give those folks a testimony, knowing where that special touch has come from. For the ones that have lost loved ones, Father, that continue to grieve, we just pray for them that they'll find comfort. And Lord, that something will be done or said that will turn hearts towards you uh, during this very difficult time in their lives. Thank you, God, for our ministry team this morning, for Abby and Ann, for all they do, and for Kevin and John, Lord, as they, uh, they, they work behind the scenes to make sure that the things are going smoothly smoothly here in the church. And Lord, for others, thank you for uh, their, their commitment to the church. Thank you for their desire to worship and their desire to serve. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. That said, let's go back to Miss Abby and Ann for a song of some praise and worship. This is called Mighty to Save.
Let us pray together. Father God, we thank you again, Lord, for this opportunity you've given us to be in your house. Father, I pray that we can set aside anything that may be on our mind that's creeping into our mind, Lord, to, to take us off the focus of why we're here. God, I just want to praise you this morning. We want to want you to send your word so that we can be changed. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says amen. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome again to First Baptist Church, and we're glad to have you with us today as we prepare to look in uh, to God's word together and uh, see what is in there that we can grab hold of and, and see how we can be, be changed. You know, there's a story of, of a woman who, who uh, uh, actually it was a man, actually, let me start with the man. It was a story of a man who had worked his whole life. He worked every hour of overtime he could. He looked for every odd job in his community uh, that he could find. And, and every time he got paid, he would take $20 and put it in his mattress. Kind of like Gary does, you know, every time. You know, $20 in the old mattress. Anybody put money in their mattress? Does anybody do that? I don't know if they do, but this man would do that. Every time he would earn some money, $20 was crammed into his mattress. Well, as, as life went on, he had a very serious, serious illness and, and his health was failing and he was going to die. And uh, his wife and, and, and him were having breakfast one morning and, and he told her, he said, honey, he said, I've made up my mind when I die, I want you to take all that money out of the mattress and bury it with me because I've worked my whole life for it and I want it to go with me. And the woman said, I promise you, I promise you, I will do that. Well, time went on. He continued to work as he could. His health had continued to fail. More 20s, more 20s, more 20s. And he ends up dying. So the woman takes all day, taking all these 20s out of the mattress. And she goes to the bank and deposits it, writes a check, and makes sure it's in his casket. <laughs> because she kept her promise. She kept her promise. I'm glad that God promises aren't like that, you know, where we, if there's a loophole. Uh, we, we want promises without loopholes. We want to know that we want to know that promises are kept. And when we ask somebody to promise something, we expect them to keep their their word. It's just part of who we are. So today we want to spend a little bit of time talking about the message. Five promises from God, five promises from God. And we're going to set the scene with just one verse of Scripture today. Day, and that's going to be in the Old Testament. We're going to go to First Chronicles chapter 16. And it'll take you a minute to find that one unless, unless you've really been good and you've stayed in your Bible a little bit to quickly flip over to First Chronicles uh, chapter uh, 16. And we're going to read just one verse of Scripture. So if you would, and you're here in the sanctuary and you're able, stand with me. If you're not, that's okay. We understand that you're reverencing God's Word where you are. We're going to read one verse of Scripture. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. It says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures, or his mercy, whichever translation you have, endures forever. May God add blessing to the reading of his holy word. You may be seated. The NIV says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And you know, and, and it was a beautiful song that Abby and Ann did for us for praise and worship as we, we, we move into this special time and, and talking about promise. Isn't it great to know that Jesus loves you? Isn't it great to know that when the world doesn't like you, the world doesn't know you, that, that Christ loves you, that he loves you so much? Isn't it great to know that God who created the universe cares enough about mankind that he gave us the greatest gift in the world and the greatest gift the world would ever know when he gave us Jesus? This Jesus who, who came to the world not as king of kings, but as a, a lowly servant, Born in a place called Nazareth. Nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Jesus, this humble man, born of a virgin, whose purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. Not to condemn the world, but through him that the world could be saved. William Carey, a missionary, once said, The future is as bright as the promises of God. We need to understand that when, when God says it, it will be. You know, I really wish Jesus would just pause right now and say, that Toby Wagner is a fine looking man. <laughs> because it wouldn't matter what you think. It matters what he thinks. Or, or to have God say, that's my child. 
If he would just say that about you and me. And you know what? He is saying that about you and me as his children. So what are the five promises that you and I can leave with today that God gives us that will help us in life? First is that promise one is God has unconditional love for you. His love is unconditional for you. And, and that's really hard for us to grab hold of because we live in a very conditional world. Now think about that for a moment. Everyone wants to be loved. Now, there are people who say, I don't care whether you love me or not, but I don't really believe that that's true. Um, I think it's born in all of us to have a desire to be loved. Uh, we are nurtured as children, and we have that innate sense that, that our mom or dad will take care of us. We grow to be provided for, and, and our parents do that by showing us love in many different ways. And so we have that, that desire that's born within us to be loved from the time that we're born. That desire is what we often call a void that's in our heart. All of us have room in our heart. And all of us have an empty spot in our heart that needs to be filled. It's something that you can't do on your own. People around us, your spouse, your children, your family can temporarily feel that. But because they are of the world and because they're influenced by what's happening around them, them. They may have a good day, which makes you feel loved, but they may have a bad day, which makes you feel worthless. Anybody ever been there? Can I be honest? Has anybody ever been there? You know that people, their moodiness projected onto you changes how you feel. And, you know, if somebody's in a good mood and they're happy and they tell you how much you're appreciated and all you do for me, it makes you feel good. But when that changes to what you're not doing and, and what you're not doing for me and what you're not doing for the family, it can it can have an adverse effect on our walk. So we all have this this void, this desire to be loved, the longing to not only be loved, but to be cared for, to know that that life matters and to know that their life matters, to know that, that we're important to somebody. See, you are important to somebody. You may be watching at home and thinking, nobody really cares. I'm by myself. I'm cooped up. COVID's got me at home. Nobody calls. Nobody from the church calls. Nobody calls me. Well, see, that's how the devil gets into your ear and, and makes you think that you're not important and that you don't matter and, and nobody misses you or nobody cares for you. And that's not true because God cares for you. When the world doesn't care for you, God still cares for you. He loves us unconditionally. With God, we have a promise that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. Now, people are quick to take that scripture out of context. And they'll quickly tell me, and I've had people tell me this. Maybe you've had people tell you this. Well, God doesn't love sin. Well, I didn't say that. I agree with that. God doesn't love sin. But the Bible is very clear that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Because God loves you. Even while we were in sin, he sent Jesus to die for us. He sent Jesus to die for those who were mocking and cursing and, and beating on him and spitting on him and plucking his beard. All those things that were happening to him. Jesus still went to the cross to die for them. The scriptures, Romans 8, 38, 39 says that not death, not even death can separate us from the love of Christ. Not life, not the angels, not demons. There's no power present or uh, things to come. There's no height or depth. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. That means wherever you are in your life, if you're the worst of the worst, Paul even considered himself the chiefest of sinners, which means Paul said, I was the worst of the worst. I look at my life and I wasn't much better. And you know, some people who've lived a good life, I have family that's lived a great life. They would give you the shirt off their back. They would give you every item in their cabinet. You know, you have people like this, that they would give you everything out of the refrigerator so you would have it. They would, they would help you. They would do whatever. But they have never acknowledged Jesus as their Savior. God loves them too, but they're lost by standards of, of Christianity. The Lord has, has loved me and you even when we dismiss that void in our life as it's not really there. You know, we're just depressed. We're just down. We've ignored the nagging feeling that, that, that we've, we're not loved, that nobody cares. But see, that's, again, where we're wrong, because God cares. 
And that's why nothing can separate us from his love. You know, if it took money to have God's love, I wouldn't have any. If it took good looks to have God's love, well, I would have that. <laughs> but Wayne wouldn't. I'd fall short. If it took education, how many of us would not be loved of God? What about you? What areas in your life, when you look at, would, would it exclude you from God's love? The areas where you know that you're not an A-plus Christian, you're a C Christian. You know, you're, you're on the path. You're trying to get better. But what in your life would disqualify you from God's love if you had to earn it? See, God's love was given to me and you, that we were created. We were the only thing he made with his hands and in his own image. Think about that. That God cared so much for us that we were made even in his own image. Friend, God's love is unconditional. It's a promise that you and I need to remember because you can be the biggest scumbag. Watching at home and say, you know, you, you don't know what I've done. And I'm glad. I'm glad I don't know what you've done. I'm glad the church doesn't know what you've done. But God knows what you've done and he still loves you. And he's still waiting for you to tur turn your life over to him, to confess the sin and move on, become that new creature, you know, that, that new person in Christ that he meant for you to be from the very beginning. His love for you is real. And for some of you, you may have never had unconditional love. I don't know that I've ever had unconditional love. Somebody said pets love unconditionally. I'm like, no, if you feed the pet, they'll, they'll, they'll eat. But, but pets probably aren't that judging, although Jen's pets judge me, I think, every day. But it's, it's hard for us to really experience unconditional love. Sin will separate you eternally from God. But that doesn't mean he doesn't love you. I believe the greatest disappointment that God has is when we stand before him not ready to meet him. I believe it breaks his heart that people will stand before him in judgment that have lived a good life, but have never claimed him as their savior. You see, God doesn't send people to hell. We choose to send ourselves because we reject the love of Jesus Christ. Second promise is that God knows you. God knows where you are in your life. He knows what's going on in your life. He's, he's not on a throne and to a point where he doesn't care what you're doing. God will be as involved in your life as you want him to be. He will draw, the scripture says, he'll draw nigh unto us, close to us. But he won't overcrowd because if you say no, then he allows you to have your way. God knows you. You say, God doesn't even know who I am or care that I exist. There's no way that he could care about me. Look at the family I have. Look, I don't have a job. Look, I have all these problems in my life. How could God really know or love me? You see, you may think he cares less about you because you've had a tough life or are in a difficult season of your life. Maybe, maybe your, your marriage is in trouble. Maybe your kids are in trouble. Maybe your grandkids are in trouble. And you say, how can God really be caring about me when all this is going on in my life? Maybe you're having health issues and you're like, where are you, God? I've served you my whole life. Where are you? You don't even know where I'm at, God. But I'm telling you, promise too is that God knows you. Psalm 139 tells us, for it was you, God, who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The psalmist said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God took time to make you unique. He gave you your quirks. He gave you your sense of humor. He gave you your, your love. He gave you, Abby, your talents. And he gave you your talents. He gave you those little desires that you have. He made you you because he needed you just the way you are. Now, does that mean that, you know, he made us and we still have some rough edges? Absolutely. We didn't come out perfect because life, life has influenced us. The environment we live in has affected us. John 10, 14 and 15 tells us that God is our good shepherd. And I know my own and my own knows me. He said, I lay down my life for what? My sheep. 
2 Timothy 19 says, the Lord knows those who are his. He protects us. He provides for us. He makes sure that we have what we need. He goes before us. Psalm 23, you all can quote that back and forth. You at home can quote that one easy, right? He leads you beside the still waters, not the rushing waters, not to make you afraid. He leads you, leads you in, the, in, in, in the areas of peace in your life. God wants calm in your life. God wants you to depend on him. He wants to be your provider and sustainer. He wants to be there for you. You say, well, I'm all alone. How, how, how will I know that he's here? You'll know. You just call upon his name and ask him to come and be where you are. To, to tell him your story. You don't have to be afraid to be honest with God. See, one of the greatest things that you and I can do is learn to be honest with God with what's happening in our life. Because why wouldn't you want to? He's not going to run and tell your neighbor. He's not going to pick up the phone and say, you're not going to believe what this person or that person's into. Because he cares. He cares for you. He knows you. And what a great promise from God to know that because he knows us, we can be real. We can be us. We can lay down the front. We can lay down the cover because he knows us. He knows where we struggle. If there's sin out there that, that is really getting to you to the point where, 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 where you just, you know, you don't even feel like you can even worship anymore. That's when you take it to God. And say, God, I'm struggling with this, or I'm finding myself doing this, and I know I shouldn't be doing it. Allow God through the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And he will, if you just ask him to. The question is, is if God knows us, do we know him? See, he knows us, but do we know? We may know the Bible front and back. We may know every scripture. We may have read the Bible a hundred times. But do we know Jesus on a personal level? relational level you say he's your savior but is he your savior is he your friend god knows us i may not know what's best for me but i can have confidence in the one who knows what's best for me billy graham said i don't know who holds the future or i don't know you know what will happen in the future but i know who holds my future Promise three, you are who the Bible says you are. We all are. We're, we're who the Bible says we are. Think about that for a moment. If promise one is God's unconditional love, promise two is God knows you. Number three is you are who the Bible says you are. Now, the only way we know what the Bible says we are is to read the Bible or to gather and, and to hear the word of God. To watch the word of God from home. To be surrounded by the word of God. And when you listen to a message, and I pray that those here who are here gathered and those of you watching at home, when you hear the word of God, say, God, speak to me. Because, see, his word is amazing. That we can preach the same message, the same scripture, the same story. But it meets us where we are. And we say, God, speak to me. Well, how does... How, does, how do we know what the Bible says, who we are? What, what does it say? Are we taking time to glean from God's word? You know, I love the book of Ruth. You like the book of Ruth? And they talk about gleaning in the fields. Gleaning in the fields were a requirement that if you had much, you had to share with those who did not. You were commanded by the law to do that. Now, they weren't allowed to go and pluck from the vine. They had to get what had fallen on the ground that would be no good for anybody else. And when all the harvest was brought in, those who were left were able to go and glean for their own survival. Go and pick up what was left. You know, the Bible says that God will provide for us. We read his truth. We know that we are redeemed. You and I know that the Bible tells us that we're redeemed when we're saved. That means that God has compensated for the faults of the bad aspects of something. Now, the definition says this way, to gain or regain possession of something. We are redeemed. We are brought back into relationship with God. We are bought with a price. What was the price? It was Jesus when he extended his hands on the cross shedding his blood for the remission of our sins 
He died for the sins that you commit. He dies for the sins I commit. He, he, he died for the, the person who's addicted in our community. He died for the person who's uh, abusing their wife or their children or someone else. He died for, he died for, the, most, he died for the most vile in our society. Romans 3.24 says, I have been justified and redeemed. Justified means that we are in right standing with God. We've become righteous. Not by our standards, because God would see that as filthy rags. He would see that as disgusting. But God sees us as clean. He sees us as forgiven. He sees us as his children. Do, do, do our children make mistakes? Do our children sometimes disappoint us? Or our grandkids or our nieces and nephews, wherever you might be. Do they disappoint us sometimes? Yes. But do you still love them? We are justified and redeemed. John 1 says, I'm a child of God. That means you're a child of God. John said, I'm a child of God. Say it with me. I'm a child of God. Say it one more time. I'm a child of God. Say it one more time and you at home say it. I'm a child of God. What a promise. What a promise. That it doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what your, your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife thinks. It doesn't matter what they think. They may have a few other choice words for you. God says, you're, you're, you're my child. And John tells us, I'm a child of God. John 15, 15 says, I'm a friend of Jesus. I mean, Jesus considers me his friend. What a promise. Romans 15, 7 says, I'm accepted by Christ. You know what that means? That means you're a saint. It means you're a saint. If you love Jesus... And you're worshiping Jesus. The Bible calls you a saint. And when you die, you know, the scripture says that it's precious in God's eyes. Why? Why? You're dying. Why would that be precious? Because you're coming home to where you belong. You're coming back to be with Jesus. The Bible says I'm a new creature in Christ. That I've been set free. That I am chosen, holy, and blameless. Ephesians 1, 4 reminds us that we're a citizen of heaven. So you're a citizen from heaven, or from heaven, which means you're a stranger in this land. You say, brother, I'm, a, I'm an American. Yes, you are. But you're an American second. You're a citizen of heaven first. Brother, that's sacrilegious. I can't believe you just, I'm just telling you the truth. It doesn't matter where you live. It matters that God is your savior and that you're a citizen of heaven. The Bible is continually reinforcing to us that we are who the Bible says we are. The Bible is reminding us that we're important to God. That nothing, when we think that nothing can go right and that we're, we're beat down and defeated and just want to take our toys and go home. God is standing right there reminding you and me in his word that we are his. That we're chosen. That we're the elect. That he has his hand upon us. That he is leading us with the help of his Holy Spirit. Promise one, God's unconditional love for you. Number two, God knows you. Number three, you are who the Bible says you are. Number four, I don't like to give numbers because you're like, oh yes, just two more and we're out of here. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Promise four, you are never alone. <laughs> Thank God that I'm never alone. Thank God that as I get older, and I know some of you laugh at that, but as I get older, I'm thankful that I'm not alone. I'm thankful I'll never be alone because it's a great promise that God said for me. I've said it many times. You've heard me say it, probably said it recently, that even though we may be lonely, we're never alone. You might think that when nobody calls or comes by, that they don't care whether you live or whether you die. It's simply not true. We can all feel lonely and it's an awful feeling to have. But friend, you are never alone. Listen, you watching at home. And I'm watching by myself. Nobody here to have conversation with after this message. But friend, you're never alone. I'm, I'm, I'm with you in this. The church is with you with where you are. Loneliness is one of those feelings that it, it makes us feel really bad. But we have to overcome that knowing that regardless of how we feel in that moment. Listen, feelings are true. If you feel it, it it's the way you feel. You can't help the way you feel. At our house, if the kids get in trouble, we always let them say how they feel. That doesn't mean they're right, 
but they're always allowed to say how they feel. Why? Because you can't change how somebody feels. So when you feel lonely, you feel lonely, but that doesn't mean you're lonely because you're not alone. God is with you. When you have those feelings of uncertainty, when you have those doubts that creep up into your mind, reach out to God. Let him know how you feel. Lord, I feel so alone. Come and be with me. It's that time that he can send the comforter in that very moment to you to reassure you. Maybe it's the phone call that rings that reminds you that somebody loves you. Maybe it's the church card or a call from someone in the church that just called to check on you. Was it by chance or did God ordain that to happen? Think about that. It's, it's amazing how God works in ways that we don't even know because he's always thinking how to show and demonstrate his love to us. The presence that only you know of God being with us helps us see beyond that perceived isolation or rejection. And in Matthew 28, 20, one of my favorites, it says, I am with you always. I'm with you always to the end of time. I'm with you always, even unto the end. Deuteronomy 31, 6 says to be strong and to be courageous. Do not fear. It says the Lord goes where? Before you. And he'll not leave you or forsake you. You see, I don't have to be scared about what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't have to be nervous about what will happen next year. I don't have to have anxiety about what might happen. Will I feel that way? Maybe. But I don't have to have it because I'm with the Lord who says I'm never alone. I had a procedure not too long ago at the doctor's office, and I remember praying. And I, I, got, I get nervous going to the doctor. Anybody get nervous going to the doctor? I, I get the anxiety creeps up. My blood pressure is high anyway. It gets up there. I, it's just seeing a white coat just makes me feel weird. I, this, I'm glad this suit's not white because I don't know if I could wear it or not. But I, I get that anxiety. I don't take any medicines or anything like that normally. I, I've not had to do that until recently. But I get nervous about it, and I always pray before I go in, Lord, just let me get in and get out. You know, but I had a, you ever, anybody ever had an MRI? Going to go through the tube? Anybody ever pray going into that thing? Yes. I said, you could put an atheist in an MRI machine, they'll come out saved. <laughs> they'll be looking for the Lord. Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted, and he binds their wounds. When we feel anxiety or being lonely, we know that 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast that anxiety on him because Jesus cares for us. Friends, we're never alone. What a promise that God gives us that even when we feel lonely, let's shake it off. I always refer to the footprints in the sand, and you know that by heart. When I thought you had left me alone, when nobody cared, and there was only one footprint in the sand, well, I realized that you were carrying me. And when things are okay and you have calm and things are going good in your life, you can still have reassurance that you're not going through life alone, that God is with you. You're never alone. So promise one is God un has unconditional love for you. God, promise two is that God knows you. And promise three is that you are who the Bible says you are. And promise four says you're never alone. And promise five says God hears your prayers. Isn't it good to know that God hears your prayers when you send them up? Isn't it good to know that you can speak to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on your time? There's no scheduling appointments. There's no being put on hold. God doesn't hit decline when the phone call comes in. That's how, that's how your kids screen you out. You want to increase communication with your kids? Text them. That's how they'll respond. If you call, they will go, decline, and it goes to voicemail. God doesn't do that. He hears our prayers. As children of God, we need to know that God hears us. Imagine having the King of kings and Lord of lords at your, at your pleasure. When you need to let him know, when you need advice, when you need direction, when something on your heart is burdening you, something on your heart is bothering you, when you want to tell somebody what you're dealing with, what are you concerned about? How can God help you or how can God intervene? First Peter 3.12. This is a good one. Write this one down. This is a good one. First Peter 3.12 says this, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. God's ears zoom in on you when you pray. 
God's ears zoom in on your neighbor when they pray. God's ear hears your neighbor and you when you pray at the same time. God hears us when we prayed this morning. He heard your prayer where you are. He heard your prayer at home. He heard every other church's prayers going up. He heard my prayer going up. And he's able and willing to not only hear and be attentive to us, but he responds. He said, brother, I haven't had an answered prayer for a long time. Listen, sometimes God's answer is no. And I can look back in my life, and I'm grateful, Kevin, that he never answered all my prayers. You ever prayed that, I just wish they'd just die and leave me alone. Boy, what if that would have happened? Or what if you wished bad on somebody? Wish they knew what I was going through. Bam, they had to go through what you went through. God knows what's good for us. He hears our prayers. Sometimes God answers yes in the moment. That your prayer aligns with his will for our life. See, we miss that part. When we ask according to his will, it should be done. Right? Sometimes we ask amiss. I like solstices. I like Mercedes. I don't have either. God probably doesn't think I need one of those. You may be praying for something that God thinks you don't need either. But what if I'm praying for my family? What if I'm praying for salvation for somebody? What if I'm praying for conviction? Lord, convict somebody that they'll turn their heart toward you. Are those aligned with God's will? John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus so that no one would perish, but everyone have it. Well, if, that, if God gave us Jesus for that reason, isn't that according to his will? We need to ask with faith believing knowing that God hears our prayer. In life, if we can just feel overwhelmed with life, in life, when we feel that way, when we feel like nothing is, is helping us, nothing is working for us, and that nobody really cares, we need to know that when we tell God, he listens. He knows where we are. Friend, God is listening to us. His ears are attentive to you and me. He sees your frustration, he sees your stress, he sees your need, but you and I have to be bold in taking what we need to the Lord. This is part of what we call having a relationship with Jesus. You see, God wants a relationship with us where just because he already knows what we need, we have to ask. That's the obedience on our part, is to do our part of the relationship. He's there to listen, but we have to take the step to, to bring him in to that conversation. Friend, you and I can have complete confidence in our prayers. Sometimes we may have to wait for the answer. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no, but often it's wait. It's wait. Wait for the right time. You say, I had a family member who was very ill, and I prayed for them, and the church prayed for them, and, and you know, they didn't get healed. They died. Well, listen, we need to look at that specific situation. I, I had this real conversation with someone not too long ago. And that doesn't mean your faith is weak. It doesn't mean that God didn't hear your prayer. In fact, maybe God did hear your prayer. We asked for that person who was dying to get better. And when God took them home, guess what, friend? They got better. They got a lot better. Not by our standard. Not the way we wanted. But they had the eternal healing. And are much better than any of us today. So what do we do? God has given you and I many blessings. And he wants to give us more. His word is chock full of good things and many promises. And you say, brother, I cannot believe. Now listen, this is, I, I know you're thinking this. I cannot believe the Bible only has five promises for me. You, you, five promises, you've given me those. I can't believe that's all there is to God's word. You've summed it up in less than an hour. Listen. God's word has 8,810 promises, 8,810 promises, 7,706 are in the Old Testament, 1,104 are in the New Testament. Deuteronomy 28 has 133 promises in that chapter alone. Now I didn't count that and I'm trusting it to be true. Vance Hunter with the Encyclopedia of Illustrations says that. The bottom line is, 
there is much to learn about God here. There is much to learn about God here. Do we know God? Do we have a desire to know God? All these promises are for me and you. Now, if you're watching today and Jesus isn't your Savior, and you already know it. So you can be here today and know that you're not saved. I don't know how you sit through a service and, and stay unsaved. I don't know how you do that. Because to think that God is giving you the opportunity. See, one day when we stand before God, God's going to, I believe, just rewind the image. I believe you'd put a big screen up there, for lack of a better words, and replace some of our life. And this will be a moment where he'll say, you had a chance and you said no. What does it take to be in a relationship with Jesus? One is you have to have a desire. Reach out to him and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. You have to do that because that's what separates us from God is the sin in our lives. And you know what? You didn't necessarily have to do anything. You were born into it. You had no choice to be a sinner. You were born into it. But when you say, Lord, come into my life, forgive me of my sins, be my savior. If you pray just that simple prayer and are serious about it, God will answer that prayer immediately. You won't have to wait. You won't have to wonder. And you're going to be saved. Find a good church. Keep watching the services. Come and join us if you want to and worship with us if you need a place to worship. And we'll baptize you right up there, right behind me. We're going to have one soon. We're going to have a couple really soon. You'll be able to watch from home. Maybe you've never seen a baptism of somebody symbolically, right? Just put under the water, buried with Christ, raised to walk as a new creature. You can have the same thing if you want it. Ask, forgive me of my sins, come into my life and save me. If you're here today in person and you want to come forward and pray, I'll be glad to do that with you this morning. And for the rest of us who have been on the way for a long time, take today's message as an encouragement. That wherever you are, however you feel in your walk with Christ, remember you are loved. And these promises are for you. And make no mistake about it, you've heard this lesson for a reason. I believe Jesus wants me to tell you that he loves you, that he sees you, he knows where you are, he hears your prayers, and his Bible is full of promises. Let's join. Go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your word. How precious. Lord, five promises today that we can apply to our lives immediately. And Lord, there are so many more throughout your word, God, that tells us how much we're loved. Father, you gave us Jesus so that we could experience you among us. Lord, you gave us the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct us, to, to fill us of the void that we have in our lives, to go with us, to show us how much you love us, to bring to our remembrance what your word says or what the preacher says. And Lord, we claim these promises this morning. And Father, I pray that if someone's not where they need to be with you, God, that they make that decision. If they've been playing church, used to be saved and on fire, but just don't even care whether they go to church anymore. Father, I pray you, you turn up the heat on them to let them know that being in the presence of God is the great place for them to be. Whether that's at home, watching the service, whether it's here in the sanctuary, or whether it's on the knees beside their bed before they go to bed calling out for you to hear their prayers. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. And thank you for your promises for those of us who believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing the song of invitation? Miss Abby and Ann have it for us. If you need prayer this morning, I'll be glad to pray with you. If you just have a special burden on your heart, you raise your hand, I'll see it. And I will pause where I'm at. I'll pray for you from right here. But if you need saved and you want me to show you in the Bible what it says, I'll be glad to do it. If you need prayer, you just raise your hand. I'll pray for you right here. You at home. We love you.
Beautiful job, and uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you uh, for tuning in at home tonight. I'll remind you, uh, Big John will be in the back receiving our tithes and offerings as you uh, depart today. Until we meet again Wednesday night at 6.30 right here on Facebook, if you've got that, or on Zoom by audio, if you'd like to join us that way. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. Until we meet again, God bless you is our prayer, and thanks for being here today. God bless you.